Here I am with Kimi Raikkonen. Kimi, hi. Uh, what can you tell me about the new car? I don't know. Kimi, what happened? I spun. <laughs> yeah, I was having a sh <laughs> Hello, everyone. This time I don't know what I'm doing, but let's see what happens. This is my Instagram, so let's see if you want to follow me. Do you have a better electronics package than the old car? Just leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. Formula One is full of different personalities. Some drivers are talkative and funny. They give us an insight into who they are, and we connect with that human element of them, which we often forget about, since we think of them a lot of the time as just racing drivers. It's easy to like Sebastian Vettel, for example, because he isn't camera shy. He is happy to talk, might make you laugh, and was also a wickedly fast driver. People have their favorite drivers for whatever reason, but from a personality standpoint, there has never been anybody like Kimi Raikkonen. On the 17th of October 1979, Kimi Raikkonen was born in Espoo, Finland. He began karting at the age of 10 and didn't race outside of Finland until he was 15. Aside from karting, Kimi competed in the Euro Formula Ford Championship, won the 1999 Formula Renault UK Winter Championship and the 2000 Formula Renault UK Championship. We'll talk about Kimi's prime soon, but it's important to provide context about how good he was at a young age and how keen so Sauber was to get him in an F1 car. Peter Sauber gave Kimi an opportunity to test in 2000 at Mugello, and on day two, Kimi was already lapping half a second quicker than Pedro Denise, Sauber's full-time driver. Sauber was confident they had a special talent on their hands, so it became a matter of keeping it on the down low to stop other teams from snooping around and poaching Kimi. The codename Eskimo was what Sauber decided on. After two more tests at Jerez and Barcelona, Sauber was convinced. They signed Kimi Raikkonen, but the FIA wasn't so convinced, questioning the risk of putting a young guy with just 23 races to his name in the big leagues. Nevertheless, Kimi was granted his super license and was a Formula 1 driver. It's said that apparently, before his debut race in Melbourne, Kimi was asleep 30 minutes before lights out. He still went on to score points on his debut and the rest of 2001 was very solid. With 4 points finishes and 8 finishes in the top 8, Kimi had attracted the attention of two other teams, McLaren and Ferrari. Nick Heidfeld was also a serious option for McLaren to take the seat of a retiring Mika Hakkinen, but Mika had a few words of wisdom for Ron Dennis. If you want to win, get the fin. Just like that, Kimi Raikkonen was a McLaren driver. 2002 was a season of unreliability and Schumacher-Ferrari dominance, but Kimi still fought his way to four podiums. In 2003, Kimi scored 10 podiums, beat his teammate Juan Pablo Montoya, and lost out to Michael Schumacher, who won the championship by just two points. It was clear that Kimi was one of the best on the grid and destined for championship success, given the car was decent and reliable. 2004 was somewhat abysmal, with eight retirements, but Kimi he still managed two P2 finishes, a P3, and a win at Spa. 2005 saw the World Championship won by Fernando Alonso, but many truly believe that Kimi was the faster driver, and Fernando was lucky that McLaren had reliability issues, which slowed them down. 2005 Kimi Raikkonen was one of the best versions of the Iceman we ever saw in Formula 1. The pure speed, determination, and absolutely no fear that he had was simply a pleasure to watch. It's a highlight reel year for him. Suzuka is the big one. With Kimi starting 17th on the grid and smiling about it. Look at his face. That is the face of a madman right there. Kimi wouldn't just recover, he'd win the race, overtaking Giancarlo Fisichella into turn one in one of the most unreal overtakes you'll ever see. The onboards from this race on Kimi's part were simply manic, ruthless, unbelievable. Onboards that truly make you feel a sense of speed and urgency to be the fastest on the racetrack. McLaren didn't produce a competitive package for a championship run in 2006, a season which was very much Schumacher v Alonso. At the 2006 Italian Grand Prix, Ferrari announced that they had signed Kimi Raikkonen for the 2007 season. At round one in Melbourne, Kimi got pole, the fastest slap, and the race win on his debut with Ferrari. He was the first Ferrari driver to win on debut since Nigel Mansell in 1989. 2007 was an exciting season, with McLaren having Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso driving their cars, a fast rookie and a double world champion looked great for the team. The two would become fierce rivals throughout the season, and Kimi saw this as an opportunity to capitalize and get amongst the championship fight. The battle could have gone either way between the three, but Kimi Raikkonen became the 2007 world champion. In 2008, Felipe Massa was the faster of the Ferrari drivers. Maybe Kimi was suffering from a championship hangover. 
who knows. In 2009, Ferrari struggled to develop a car which would suit the drastic regulation changes which were introduced. Ferrari improved towards the end of the season, and Kimi finished up with a win in Spa, a P2, and three P3s. Kimi was contracted for the 2010 season, but Ferrari and Kimi announced that they would be parting ways at the end of 2009. Ferrari would sign Fernando Alonso, and it was rumoured that Kimi could return to McLaren to partner Lewis Hamilton. After negotiations broke down, Kimi was linked with Mercedes and even Toyota before they left the sport. Kimi would sit out for the 2010 and 2011 season. His F1 future was kind of unclear. Renault claimed Kimi contacted them about a drive, but Kimi shut this down and denied any such contact. Kimi's return would happen in 2012 with Lotus. Aside from Vettel winning the championship, Kimi was one of the real winners in 2012. He quickly humbled anyone who doubted him after two years away from the sport. He was consistent and showed a ton of pace. The highlight was when Kimi won the season's final race at Abu Dhabi. 2013 was off to a flyer when Kimi won the opening round in Australia and scored eight podiums for the season. Kimi would return to Ferrari in 2014 and remain there until the end of 2018. Kimi would go back to where it all started with Sauber and retire at the end of the 2021 season. Majority of people would consider Kimi's prime to be during the early 2000s. His stint at McLaren was a huge what if and with good reliability, Kimi wouldn't have just the one championship. You might ask, why was his prime scary? It's simple, because I was a Ferrari fan and Kimi was a threat. Kimi is considered one of the quickest drivers Formula 1 ever saw, and what's even crazier is that he entered Formula 1 after just 23 races, something that is unheard of and simply wouldn't happen today. It's truly bizarre to me that he just stepped into an F1 car in Mugello and was faster than Sauber's full-timer, literally the very next day. If that isn't natural talent, then I don't know what is. How can a man who says so little and doesn't care about cameras or media attention make so many people around the globe universally love him. Kimi is unintentionally funny. He isn't playing a character or hiding who he really is. I don't even think he tries to be sarcastic. I think Kimi Raikkonen is what you see is what you get, and one of the best examples of it. Kimi was one of the last old school Formula 1 drivers when he retired in 2021, but he still rocked the baggy race suit and had that all-in racing driver mentality. He was prepared to do whatever was necessary to drag every bit of performance out of the car he was given. Not only that, but Kimi had one of the coolest nicknames the sport has ever seen. The Iceman. Kimi feared no driver, but drivers feared Kimi. If you're ever sitting around the table with your mates, you know, kicking it, talking about which driver had the best prime in F1, Kimi Raikkonen simply must be in that conversation. He doesn't have the silverware to show for it, just the one championship. But do me a favor, if anyone ever argues that with you, pull up his 2005 onboards. Just do it. Put that phone in front of him and show them his 2005 season highlights. Do you know that meme of Ronaldo with the hair, the Madrid home kit, the Champions League Knights, and the purple socks? It was over before the game started. Kimi Raikkonen, the smile, the baggy suit, Suzuka, P17 on the grid. The race was over before it even started. 